RTS was born when Dune 2 called itself an RTS. Or was it when Herzog Zwei laid the foundation? Remembering the 90s, what may be called the golden age of RTS, I think we're all longing for the feeling we got playing StarCraft, Age of Empires, and Red Alert. Will this year allow us to relive the glory? Let's find out and welcome to the most anticipated real-time strategy games of 2024. For a very promising one, Zero Space. This is calling itself a cinematic RTS, set within an epic sci-fi story where your decisions determine the fate of the galaxy. No two matches are meant to play the same way, because they're supposed to be nearly limitless combinations of factions, mercenary units, and heroes, which is supposed to all lend itself towards being a deep experience and a good way for players to express themselves and their personal strategy. So yeah, it does look a bit like a spiritual successor to StarCraft because there are parallels we can quite clearly draw here. But there's some interesting things where it is kind of a bit of an RPG where you have dialogue choices and narrative choices to make. But it's also saying that you're able to micro without the APM, which is a thing that may or may not work. And that's one of the things where it's sort of like modern RTSs tend to try and make it a bit more accessible, make it a bit easier to get into, but that also has backfired in ways where the game just becomes a little bit too generic or boring. But maybe someone will actually figure it out and Zero Space might be the ones. I think the biggest, most important thing here is that there's a lot of focus on the campaign. A choice-driven RPG system, moral quandaries, a journey through the galaxy, with characters and heroes and villains across 13 main story missions, 14 hero loyalty missions and 40 side story arcs. There's a lot of single player content here, which many newer RTSs which focused on the competitive esports side tended to not quite get right if they attempted it at all. This epic single player campaign is crucial to just getting people into the game, caring about the game. And then the esports scene may grow from there. With RTS and the current times of gaming, you never know quite sure how it's gonna go. So we're gonna see how Zero Space comes along. I'm sure many of you have been waiting for Industrial Annihilation. The galaxy is at stake. You, the commander, needs to claim it. This is a sequel to Planetary Annihilation, and it's blending RTS real-time strategy from the Annihilation series of games, but this time the twist is that it's mixing in factory building. So there's conveyor belts and resource harvesting and manufacturing and processing, but it's all leading to building an army for an RTS battle. So that's an interesting twist. So you build the ultimate factory for RTS battles, where you don't train units, you make the machines that make weapons and construct vehicles that those units then go into battle. Again, good news, there is supposed to be a single player campaign for you to play through. There's multiple factions to choose from, and interestingly, they're giving you the option to unshackle the AI, so you can let the AI go all out on you to make this a really competitive experience, but you don't have to do that if you're not looking to hurt yourself. We haven't seen a super lot of this quite yet at the time of making this video, but good news, it's coming to Steam Early Access quarter two, 2024. So by the middle of 2024, Industrial Annihilation will be playable, and then we can decide whether this is one that's going to make it. For a more fantasy approach, God's Sworn. This is a classic mythological RTS, you experience an epic fantasy retelling of the Northern Crusades, where pagan gods and their tribes clash against crusaders and armies of heaven. You choose a divine hero, rally worshippers alongside mythical creatures, and smite the unworthy. 
Many have said that this sorta kinda looks like Warcraft-ish vibes. So you know, RTS is trying to recapture the past with modern twists, so as you can see, these games so far are kinda trying to do that. So we've been watching this game for a couple years at this point, but it's becoming a playable state here. There's divine heroes and abilities, you build bases and be worshipped, and there is a co-op campaign, one of the latest RTS trends, which actually is very popular, which is co-op. So a co-op campaign can be quite fun. It's also a good way to get friends into playing an RTS game together without the stress of competitive ranked ladder multiplayer. However this turns out, we won't have to wait too long for our initial judgments. It's looking at early access quarter one 2024 and it might take a long time to fully release. We'll at least be able to dip our toes into God's Sworn relatively soon. Alright, then one for something that's actually kinda new. Dino Lords. This is a real-time strategy game where you gather resources, build fortifications, and command units in defense against invading Danes with their arsenal of fierce dinosaurs. <laughs> That's a twist, isn't it? I mean, at first glance, this game looks great visually, and it has that sort of 90s vibe where they just sort of threw dinosaurs into everything, probably because of Jurassic Park. It's like, oh yeah, we've got Danes fighting each other, and there's dinosaurs, because of course there are dinosaurs. So you'll be building up your stronghold, and what kind of looks to be slightly inspired by Age of Empires 4 with slight stronghold vibes. You have your units man the ramparts to defend and attack in medieval warfare. And there is a player-controlled protagonist for you to control directly. So yeah, there's a lot of traditional classic RTS elements here, but it is just kind of different. Generally, it looks very interesting at least, it could be very good. But we don't have a release window quite yet, it is planning to enter early access at some point, but nothing fixed. So we can keep an eye on Dino Lords through 2024, and maybe it'll be good, or maybe it will just be weird. Now for a proper look back, but a leap forward. Age of Mythology Retold. This is Age of Mythology, but a remake. Importantly, this is not like the other Age of Empires definitive editions, which are sort of remake, but mostly remaster. Age of Mythology Retold is supposed to be a remake, a new game. So you can expect significant changes to the campaign, to the graphics, to the gameplay. And that could be very good, because Age Mythology generally has had some weird issues over the years. You know, them coming back and adding in the Chinese civilization, which the gameplay was just kind of weird. And the balance has always had problems, and multiplayer stability was always kind of iffy. So just remaking the whole thing seems like a better idea. And that's what Age of Mythology Retold is supposed to be. Though we have not seen anything besides a cinematic announcement which is over a year old at this point. Though because it's been a while, there is a chance that Age of Mythology Retold releases towards the end of 2024, but I just want to be clear that I'm not banking on that. It could be a 2025 release or even 2026. If there's a chance that it's going to release in 2024, I'm going to mention it here. I didn't mention it last year because I didn't expect it to be a possibility in 2023 and seems like I was right on that. So yeah, I just wanted to let you know about Age of Mythology Retold. It is in development. It is supposed to be a full remake, so a new game. And they are talking about it, but we haven't seen anything yet. Hey, now that you're a bit into the list, I'm sure you're enjoying it, so it would be greatly appreciated if you can like the video. Thank you. Alright, next game. Global Conflagration. This is set in an alternate future, and it's an RTS that will take you on a massive European conquest campaign. You build your base, train units, and deploy measures, and call in airstrikes to destroy your opponents. In this one, you can expect a traditional base building system, infantry squads, a balanced and unique set of land units for each faction, 
aircraft and helicopters and deployable measures to support your units kind of like i don't know like god abilities i guess but you know in a militaristic approach this is one that we have been looking at for a number of years and it's been coming along slowly it is planning to enter early access at some point and they're saying it'll be at least two years in early access so we're not gonna get a full release in 2024 but it's starting to look kind of ready based on the new trailers and new footage coming out and there's been demos here and there so i can sort of expect a 2024 early access release release and then full release will be 2026. You'll be in for the long haul if you jump into global conflagration but whatever it takes to make a good RTS take your time get it right. We've been waiting on this one and I'm just hoping that it does turn out as good as the trailers make it look. And then we've got Red Chaos The Strict Order. This is supposed to be a classic and modern real-time strategy game that offers a variety of strategic aspects based on the strengths and weaknesses of individual units and it's supposed to be balanced despite the vast differences of units and factions. Balance is always a problem. I don't think any RTS can be perfectly balanced but some are more balanced than others. Another traditional RTS that we're looking at here with gathering of resources, building of bases and producing units. So that's what most people are looking for right now. We just need a good one. And there is a campaign, but this one has a big focus on multiplayer with up to six players. But it also says fun is guaranteed for everyone. And I think that kind of depends on your personality. <laughs> Fun in competitive multiplayer RTS, I think, yeah, that's not for everyone. But they're trying. This is another that we've seen somewhat over the last couple years, and it was looking very rough last year. But this time, they've got some new trailers, new gameplay footage, and it's looking a lot better than last time. So this is starting, like, I was not confident about Red Chaos' the strict order, and now I'm cautiously optimistic. We'll have to see how it turns out. There's no current release window for the game. Based on what we're looking at, it seems like a high potential for a 2024 release. But we'll see what Red Chaos A Strict Order brings to the table. Now, there are many Command & Conquer inspired games here, but this one is Dying Breed. Just at a glance, this looks like a Command & Conquer mod, but it is a new game, and despite the visual style looking almost identical, it is completely new graphics and new gameplay and everything. This is supposed to be a Golden Age RTS classic, or at least styled to be one. Fast-paced action, strategic decision-making, battling evil arch-enemies, zombies, and retro-futuristic technologies, all to a 90s electro-metal soundtrack and FMV live-action cutscenes, with what I think is so-so acting but that somehow fits the universe, it just works somehow. <laughs> I kind of miss FMV acting, and it's nice that some people are actually trying to do it again. This is clearly a throwback to the original Command & Conquer, but with modernizations and a slightly different story, with more mission variety and modernized gameplay and all of the nice new features that we have today, but in a classic pixel art RTS. I played the demo for this and it is actually kind of fun, but it was a very vertical slice demo, what I've tried anyway. This has been in development for a number of years. It's another one which looks like it's really coming along and it's been picked up by a publisher, which is another throwback name, which obviously it's not the same people as it was back then, but apparently the brand is still around, Microprose. You know, I know Microprose from publishing Civilization 2, but here Microprose is publishing Dying Breed. So this is a throwback in more ways than expected. Anyway, it's a very interesting and surprisingly fun. And if you're looking for a proper throwback to the original Command & Conquer, then have a look at Dying Breed. Now, a lot of people have been excited for this one, Dorf RTS. Take command of one of three unique factions and conquer your enemies in a twisted vision of the future. Construct sprawling bases, scour the land for resources to mine and refine, and assemble powerful armies of land, air, and sea units to smash your adversaries. 
You'll need to construct infrastructure, building massive bases of factories, refineries, and defensive structures. You gather the spoils of war, pumping oil, mining ore, gathering scrap and all of that. And you'll be sending a multitude of units to storm enemy bases, capturing their factories to gain access to their technologies. And then you can mix and match their strengths to your own to form the perfect army. This is one that we have been watching for a couple years, and it was another one that was looking very rough just a year ago. But their new trailer really seems to be shaping things up. It's looking pretty good. It has that gritty 90s aesthetic, late 90s I suppose, and of course it does have that retro RTS vibe, but, but more Red Alert than Tiberian Dawn. There's no particular release window right now, so you can keep an eye on Dorf and see if it's the one for you. Then, for an indie development that looks way better than you think it could look, Dust Front. This is a classic RTS with grand strategy elements and a non-linear campaign where you lead strategic maneuvers, overwhelm your enemies with cannon fodder, or stomp them into the Stone Age with carpet bombing on the lifeless fields of Dust Front. This one really does look grim, dark, Warhammer 40k-esque, but just it looks so good really, like the graphics and the visual style and the setting. It is sort of familiar but unique in its own way. There's a global map which you'll be traversing from I suppose mission to mission, a global economy, events that can happen, technology branches, you can garrison your troops and they gain ranks as they gain experience through battles. The grand strategy element has simultaneous planning and turn-based movement and just generally looks very, very promising. Having said that, it's basically a very indie development that has been slowly coming along. Just sort of like little bits shown off over the years, but I mean, the latest trailer is just showing so, so much. And I don't know if it will release in any form in 2024. It's just looking better and better every time we come back to look at it. It's just one to keep an eye on. And I really do hope that we get to play something of Dust Front soon. I wouldn't hold my breath. You can keep tabs on it to see if you are interested. And when bigger news is announced, you'll be able to know. For one that's totally not inspired by Dune, Barkan. A harsh sand planet has become the stage for a brutal war between three great clans. For the power over rare minerals, each want to prove their superiority. In the heat of dynamic battles with the enemy's troops, you have to prepare to face and attack giant sand snakes. <laughs> yes, Barkin does sound very familiar. If we're not gonna get Dune 3000, then maybe Barkin will be good. This has been in development for a little bit, but not out yet. However, at the time of recording, there is a free demo you can try on Steam, so you can just jump in and try it out. See the harsh sand planet and the sand snakes for yourself and the rare minerals. And generally it seems to be shaping up. Will it be an actual spiritual successor, its own thing? Or maybe it'll be a bit dry. We'll see how it goes for Barkin. Okay, now I want to mention one that's been on and off for a while. Liquidation. This is an action-packed RTS where you take the role of a commander and bring back balance to the war-torn world of Vea. This one really does sort of feel like a mix between Warcraft and Starcraft, but the developer has been having some complications over the years. I actually tried the demo for this a long time ago, a year, two years ago maybe? And it showed some promise, but then development kind of slowed down, there were some issues. But then the developer came back in, continued working on it, and now it's pretty much back in production. The latest update says Skirmish AI is complete, so that's quite, uh, that's quite promising. Skirmish AI, that's not the easiest thing to implement, and Liquidation now apparently has it. Considering its history, it may take forever to release. It is planning some kind of early access release. However, when, who knows. But the estimate right now, it's saying the full release of the game is supposed to be in the second half of 2024. Full release. So early access has to be early 2024. That is just a statement though. 
Always remember, a release date is not a release date, it's a picture of a release date. It doesn't mean it's gonna release on that date. Delays happen. And liquidation is one that's primed to be delayed. Maybe the developer will pull it off and actually be able to stick to that schedule. Liquidation, maybe 2024. Going very alien, Space Tales. This is an RTS set in a retro-futuristic environment where you take the role of a commander in the Intergalactic Planetary Expansion, the IPE, and you immerse yourself in a thrilling mission to explore and conquer new planets, pushing the boundaries of the human empire. Here you unravel a gripping storyline where you embody the character of Xander, that name sounds familiar, and you embark on an adventure filled with 16 main missions. You encounter a myriad of diverse alien races, you discover wondrous worlds, you unlock research points, you meet intriguing characters, and you unveil the secrets of the IPE and your true destiny. Base building is a little different here with hub technology, and generally it looks kind of interesting, kind of unique, but also a weird throwback visually to the 90s era of gaming. There's something modern about it, but also something very nostalgic about how this game looks. It looks like something, but I can't quite put my finger on it. What do you think this game looks like? Either way, there is a free demo for you to try at the time of making this video, so you can go ahead and have a closer look at Space Tales and see if you want to get into it when it fully releases. For some 3D pixels we call voxels, Heart of Muriet. This is a voxel RTS game set in the fabled lands of Muriet. With a focus on strategy over unit micromanagement, you'll build settlements, research powerful magic, and manage bands of warriors while on your quest to restore your house to its former glory. Now, I know voxels are not your favorite art style here. I mean, some of you I'm sure love pixel art, but generally speaking, the RTS community isn't always into voxels, even less so than pixel art. It doesn't look that bad. Color-wise and design-wise, there's a lot to look at here and it's not bad on the eyes. This one is fantasy, so there's elves, dwarfs, mages, and there's four schools of magic. It's promising easy unit control, so micro is not supposed to be an issue here, and you're supposed to focus on the strategy and decision making. There is also a map editor for people to make new maps and tell new stories, and there is, of course, the story campaign to play through, so a nice single-player campaign. Generally, this seems like an easier one for RTS players to get into, so if you haven't played an RTS for a long time, or you have friends who don't play RTS, or you've never played an RTS, then this one seems like it's a bit of an easier one to get into, not too hardcore, but still has a lot to it, so could be good. There is a free demo as well for Heart of Muriet. Isn't it great free demos are just the norm now? So you can try the demo and judge for yourself if Heart of Muriet has any depth. Speaking of pixel art, TFC, the Fertile Crescent. This is an RTS that I have mentioned for a few years now, but it's just something that's really kind of nice to look at and see exist. This is sort of like Age of Empires 1, but kind of a demake because it's even more pixel art. But also your village has a bit more survival elements where you need to keep food up or people starve. So it's kind of like how a lot of people actually played Age of Empires 1 in a kind of roleplay way, but it's actually mechanics here. But this is supposed to be a competitive multiplayer RTS. You build up your village slash base, you gather resources, you expand, and you fight for survival in the Near East Bronze Age, the golden age of human urbanization. And this is such a competitive game that there are actually multiplayer tournaments ongoing right now as this game is in early access. Having said that, it's been in early access since early 2022, so it's been over a year, and the initial plan was for it to stay in early access for at least one year, and it's gonna be two years at this point. So I don't want to mention this game every year forever, but there's a good chance that this does actually release in 2024, but we'll see how much further the Fertile Crescent will go from its initial release window. Then, a remake of one of my favorite old games, Empire of the Ants. 
Yes, this is an Ant RTS, but no, it's not that one. It's not the one that we've been playing for so long. Empire of the Ants is actually an old game that I played, and I wish I could get it running again, but I just can't figure it out. It's got this weird thing where it doesn't understand modern GPUs. Even in, like, virtual machines, it gets confused. So I can't get Empire of the Ants running, as in the game from the year 2000. However, that game was published by Microids, and this is published by Microids, so it's the same publisher remaking one of their old classic games and I'm kind of hyped for it. This is an ant RTS so you're building up an ant colony fighting other ants and other bugs and there's an epic adventure where you are a brave ant in third person but it is an RTS game as well. Exploring gorgeous looking environments in a photorealistic approach using Unreal Engine 5 and there's day night cycles and season changes which affect gameplay. It just looks so good. It seems like such an old school take but such a new school take as well. Now we haven't seen all that much gameplay but the release date is set for 2024 so it must be relatively well along. And I'm just sort of excited for this more because I can't get the original game running. So maybe this will feel the same, but better, hopefully. I just really miss Empire of the Ants. So maybe in 2024, I can play Empire of the Ants. And then for a game from Petroglyph, the old Command and Conquer developers in their new company. This one is called Nine Bit Armies, a bit too far. This is a voxel RTS, which I know what you think about voxels, but you lead a modern military, build bases, unlock units, and attack in all-out war, engaging on land, sea, and air in over 30 missions, online skirmishes, or co-op. And it's supposed to be easy to learn but difficult to master, which is sort of the tagline of almost every other RTS out there. Easy to learn but a challenge to master, right? I mean, that's sort of a philosophy in the RTS genre and sometimes it works out, sometimes not so much. It either becomes too easy or too complex. But this is taking the classic approach. So there's two single player campaigns spanning 30 missions. You can conquer the campaign in co-op. There's supposed to be a competent AI to fight against classic base building, destructible environments because it is a voxel world, mod support, which is very interesting. If the community explodes, then we could get a lot more content. And it is from Petroglyph, which generally has been pushing RTSs their entire careers, considering Grey Goo and the remastered Command & Conquer collection, which they worked on. This one is mostly interesting because of who's making it. What they'll bring to a voxel world will be fascinating to see how much they stick to what they know and how much they move forward. Will they truly go a bit too far or not far enough? We'll find out in 9-bit armies set to release sometime in 2024. All right, I'm gonna mention the game that everyone keeps asking me to mention. Manor Lords. Yes, yes, I know Manor Lords. No, I didn't forget Manor Lords. Basically, every list I make, no matter the genre, someone asks for Manor Lords. Oh, here's the city building list. You forgot Manor Lords. Oh, here's the RTS list. You forgot Manor Lords. Oh, here's the base building list. Where's Manor Lords? Like, should I be listing Manor Lords in every single genre? <laughs> Look, I'm hyped for Manor Lords. It looks phenomenal. It's a medieval strategy game with in-depth city building and large-scale tactical battles in real time and a complex economy and social simulations. And it's got phenomenal graphics. And I played the demo and it is somehow super optimal optimized, like it was buttery smooth despite seeing every single blade of grass, zooming in and out had no lag, Mana Lords, everyone's hyped for it, but I can't list it in every single genre. I'm already putting it in two genres, which is the city building list and the RTS list, which also of course will be in any strategy list. But yes, we've watched Mana Lords for years. Yes, it had a demo and I played that too. I've got a video on it. It looks great. It plays great. I'm loving it so far. And it is actually set to release this time. 26th April 2024. So we should be getting a released version of Manor Lords early on in the year in 2024. And then maybe I can stop listing it as an upcoming game so people can stop asking for it. But you know, I bet even after Mana Lords releases and I stop listing it as an upcoming game, people will be like, where's Mana Lords? It got an update. <laughs> 
Yes, we know about Mana Lords and I didn't forget it. Here it is, okay? It's releasing soon. We can all hold our breath and see if it really does deliver on all of their promises. For another one that people always ask me to list, Beyond All Reason, Bar. This is basically a large-scale, massive sci-fi battle simulator where all projectiles are simulated in real time and there's ballistics and terrain deformation and it's a huge RTS epic experience in the struggle for domination. Terrain plays a huge part here, no two maps will play out the same, radar can't penetrate mountains, nuclear warfare will physically alter the terrain, there's 10 different unit classes and you can have have experimental units which just really opens up the possibility for strategies and a total of over 400 units which makes it practically infinite with the possibility of tactics. Now this is basically a community driven project. It's not a published game or anything like that it's just been in development for years and years and it recently had some massive updates over the past year a massive graphics update and there's so much more content being added into it and it is still technically an alpha but you know I, it's hard to tell how long it'll be an alpha and how much more there will be beyond all reason BAR it is a very impressive development and I'm gonna mention it again here just so you know that it is still in development but you can play it in 2024. In a similar vein Sanctuary Shattered Sun this is another epic scale, traditional RTS which has strategic zoom, streaming economy, simulated projectiles and a grand scale where you take control of armies and hundreds upon hundreds of units and you crush your enemies. This is one that I may be listed a bit too early in previous years. Through 2023 there were playable demos at events which means that this is becoming pretty much a game. <laughs> so this is something that possibly could release in 2024. There's no fixed release window or release date and honestly a year ago the trailer footage was laggy and rather incomplete looking but now it does look like a game which is promising and I can see some kind of release over the next year in 2024. Maybe 2025 since some people have actually tried this game at event booths then we do actually know it is a real game. The main concern here will be performance. It says they allow up to 10,000 units in a single match which is huge. Will that just lag everyone's computers or have they figured it out? The maps are 40 by 40 kilometers so it's huge battlegrounds as well to fit those 10,000 units. There's weather control, there's super weapons and it is the future and everything wants to kill everything. So Sanctuary Shattered Sun, very promising, very exciting. We'll see if they can do it. Now for the Command & Conquer successor which I think every Command & Conquer fan is waiting for. Tempest Rising. You command one of three distinct factions in a desperate struggle for power and resources. It's a classic RTS set on earth after a nuclear war with a new rare mineral to harvest, bases to build, units to control and near future technologies. This has a free demo and I played some of it and it looks pretty good. Visually amazing, no notes. Gameplay wise it was sort of a working, it sort of felt a bit weird but kind of actually was nice. Needed some work but it was early times. Each faction offers a unique roster of units. There will be two single player campaigns with between mission cutscenes. It's also promising skirmish, custom games and ranked multiplayer with ELO ratings. So this is gonna be an RTS as we know it and it's trying to deliver huge promises on every front. The all important single player campaign and the competitive multiplayer with cinematic cutscenes that look phenomenal so far. And it needs to be very cool and slightly cheesy and it seems to be actually working. So go try the demo for Tempest Rising and let me know what you think. Is it really going to not just live up to Command & Conquer? Lots of games kind of sort of live up to Command & Conquer but will this actually surpass it? Will it actually feel like the next 
Command & Conquer, because I don't think we're getting a new Command & Conquer game, unless maybe it's a mobile game. We didn't even get remasters of all the existing Command & Conquer games, we just got like two of them. There's so many more games out there to be remastered, but no, we got two. So right now, Tempest Rising is the biggest hope for Command & Conquer fans, and it will either deliver and we'll all be very happy, or it won't deliver and we'll all be very disappointed. For one that's had its share of controversy and ups and downs, Homeworld 3. I was recently sponsored by Homeworld 3, so I'm just gonna be factual with this one. It is the next Homeworld game. It's a space RTS where you don't so much have a base, but you have a mothership, which by the way, if you've seen it horizontal, you can rotate it to be vertical like the days of old. So don't freak out if you see a horizontal mothership. There's no up in space, but you can make your spaceship face up. One of the main changes for Homeworld 3 this time is that there is terrain in the form of derelict spaceships and I suppose asteroids and stuff like that. So it's not just a 3D space that's big and open, it's 3D space with stuff in it, which does affect the gameplay quite significantly. So it's been coming along, we've had some better looks at gameplay, and it's set for a February 2024 release window. So Homeworld 3 will be releasing relatively soon, and you can see quite a bit of gameplay of it already, after many years of no real gameplay being shown off. So we kind of know what it looks like, what it plays like, you can go have a look at it. It's meant to have a single player campaign, there is War Games co-op mode, which is sort of a rogue light short co-op missions. PvP with AI or online against other players, and mod support. So yeah, that's Homeworld 3, what do you think? Moving on to probably the most hyped RTS ever, Stormgate. This is supposed to be the next-gen real-time strategy game, set in a science fantasy universe, and it's by Frost Giant Studios, which is basically ex-Blizzard StarCraft devs. And generally, it sort of feels like StarCraft plus Diablo in an RTS, and they've had massive funding for this game. Last I saw, over $20 million. There's mechs and demons, there's supposed to be an ever-evolving single-player campaign, co-op missions, AI, online ladders. They say it's supposed to be the first truly social RTS. And importantly, I think I should mention that it is going to be free to play, but they are promising not pay to win. So make of that what you will. And there will be an editor to create custom missions, mini games, and basically that user generated content, sort of like the StarCraft arcade, you know, which is very popular and leads to entirely new games being developed. So I think the important thing to note here is Stormgate is trying to have everything, all of it. There's supposed to be something for everyone. And that is the biggest promise you can make and the hardest one to keep. How do you make all of it, everything, as good as it needs to be? All of it up to par, nothing lacking. That's insane. With all the backing they have and all the experience they have, maybe Stormgate can do it. Maybe. Who knows? There have been some closed betas and show-offs and stuff like that. There's no fixed release window, but because we've been seeing it for a while and gameplay has been revealed and they're talking a lot about it, there is a chance that it releases, at least in some form, in 2024. They might release the campaign in chapters, who knows? But I would not be surprised if Stormgate releases in 2024. However, of course, it could be 2025 or 2026. You never know with these things. But this is an upcoming RTS list, so if I don't mention Stormgate, people will get very mad. So here you go. At Stormgate, it's supposed to be everything. Next up, I want to mention Stronghold Unreal. Stronghold Unreal is supposed to be the next Stronghold game from Firefly Studios. Now, I was also recently sponsored to look at Stronghold Definitive Edition, so I will try and stay factual on this one as well. Mainly because we don't really know anything about Stronghold Unreal besides the fact that it's supposed to be in the Unreal Engine, and it's the next mainline Stronghold game. What you're seeing on screen right now is Stronghold Definitive Edition, which released to good reviews. It generally has everything that people asked for except for a skirmish AI, so make of that what 
what you will. Now we don't know if Stronghold Unreal will release in 2024. We actually don't know much about it at all. There is a possibility of it being revealed and released in 2024, so I will mention it here. Mainly because when they released Stronghold Definitive Edition, they couldn't do everything they wanted with that because they said most of the team was on Stronghold Unreal. And it was actually a very small team working on Stronghold Definitive Edition. So through all of this that's been going on, Stronghold Unreal has been the focus at Firefly Studios. They have a lot under the hood. It just depends whether they open the hood sooner or later. And while we're talking about some older RTSs revived, Battle Realms Zen Edition. This is not a remake or a remaster. Battle Realms is an old RTS set in sort of an Asian mythological world that was a favorite of many. And the developer in 2019 decided, well, no one's gonna fund a sequel or anything like that, so I'm just gonna take the game and release it again on Steam, but it's in development again. And I'm not sure if there's any other game that really has done this, where you take the game that released ages ago and then release it into early access as it's back in development to try and modernize it. It's sort of weird. It's like you take an old game and then you release it into early access decades later as it works on remastering or remaking itself. But either way, Battle Realm Zen Edition was really rough for a couple years. But a while ago, it got kind of good and it more recently got huge updates that has really sort of rebalanced the game, restabilized the multiplayer, there's new maps, there's a little bit of new content, but it's mostly the same game, but it's just kind of different and better now. So if you like Battle Realms from the past, then Battle Realm Zen Edition is sort of just the better way to play it right now. But also if you've never tried Battle Realms, then I can highly recommend trying the Zen Edition of it. Progress is rather slow. It's been in early access since the end of 2019, so it's been many years. But I thought I should just mention it here because this RTS list sort of has that vibe of recapturing the glory days. And many people say Battle Realms looks a lot like Warcraft 3, and I just want to point out that Battle Realms released before Warcraft 3. Go have a look at Battle Realms Zen Edition. Now, just in case some things happen, I just want to make a little note here before someone says I forgot it. Empires of the Undergrowth. This is not Empire of the Ants. This is Empires of the Undergrowth. It has been in early access for six years. It is estimating a 2024 release, but come on, it's been in early access for six years. Most people like it. Maybe it'll be finally released this year. Immortal Gates of Pyre. I listed this for years. Open beta was supposed to be late 2022. But actually, the open alpha playtest was late 2023. Immortal Gates of Pyre could be years off at this pace. We'll see how that goes. There is a little bit of talk about a Grim Dawn RTS. Set in the same universe as Grim Dawn, there's some discussion about it, they are working on it, but they're still figuring things out. The developers, Crate Entertainment, have a big update for Grim Dawn in 2024, and they're supposed to be finishing Farthest Frontier as well. After those two are complete, I expect focus to shift more towards this Grim Dawn RTS, but that's probably a longer time coming. And finally, there is some hints at a Star Wars RTS. Maybe. There's been a tweet here, there's been a quote there hinting at a Star Wars RTS. But there's nothing concrete, so they might announce something about that in 2024. There you have it. Press the like button and get games using the GOG referral link below to support videos like this one. Thank you to all the patrons and YouTube members who really support this channel and keeping videos like these being made. Join if you want your name on future videos. If you want to stay in the know for another genre, go to the next list video linked on the screen since you like strategy and you won't want to miss the turn-based 4x games. Plus, some of you might be wondering where games like Men of War 2, Broken Arrow, and Warno are, which you'll find in the tactics list. Thanks for watching and I'll see you there.